welcome to the first episode of our Work Manager series. Work Manager is now the recommended solution for long running tasks. So in this episode of Mad Skills, we'll take a closer look at how to get started with using the Work Manager APIs. By the end of the video, you'll know how to define, schedule, and chain work requests. We have lots to cover, so let's get to work. To help you follow along, we're going to be using the Work Manager Colab as a basis. Our goal in this Colab is to let the user blur an image. And we're going to be using the Work Manager API so that the blurring work can be done in the background. Work Manager is an Android Jetpack library that lets you schedule long running tasks reliably. Previously, there are different job scheduling APIs. Some of these APIs only worked on specific Android versions or if Google Play services were installed. Work Manager works with all versions of Android since Ice Cream Sandwich, regardless of whether Google Play services are installed. The other great thing about Work Manager is that you can schedule tasks to run based on certain constraints so that your task only runs when the constraints are met. You can also chain work requests so that jobs run sequentially depending on whether previous jobs were successful. All right, now that we know a little more about Work Manager, let's start looking at some code. In Work Manager, there are two main classes we care about, the worker and the work request class. The worker class is where we're gonna define the work we wanna perform in the background. We do so by creating our own worker class and overriding the do work method. This method runs asynchronously on a background thread, which means it won't block the user from interacting with the app while our work is being done. Here we created a blur worker that extends the worker class. We then override the do work method to implement the work we actually want to schedule. In this case, we're taking an image as an input and blurring it with the create blurred bitmap method. Do work should eventually return a result to let us know whether our work completed successfully. Notice that we can also include an output as part of the result. These result functions are overloaded and can also accept a work manager data object. Data serves as a structured key value storage that you can pass around. The easiest way to build data is by using the work data of extension function. In this function, you can then map one or multiple keys to values and return them as part of the response. There is a hard upper limit to how many bytes you can pass around with a data object and our bitmaps are definitely above that limit. So instead of passing the bitmaps around, we're actually passing the URIs of the bitmaps. Here we're using the URI of the newly blurred image as our output. By adding an output to our result, we can then use this output as an input for future tasks if we decide to chain multiple workers together. When we chain tasks together, the output from the first task will be available as an input to the next task. And we'll see this in action a little later. Having said all that, we should return success if our work was completed successfully. On the other hand, if the scheduled work was unsuccessful, we should return a failure result. In some cases, we might even want to return a retry result, which means something went wrong, but we should retry this work at a later time. Once we've defined the work we want to do, we need to actually schedule it with Work Manager by using a work request. And we can take a look at how that's done in Blur View Model. The Work Manager service is responsible for scheduling all the work that we request, and it takes into account the system's resources to ensure that the work is spread out evenly. The Work Request class allows us to define how and when we want our work to be executed. For example, we can specify this work to run periodically only when the device is connected to Wi-Fi and power. Here we've got a Work Manager instance, and we use it to create a one-time work request to execute the blur worker that we created earlier. We then enqueue this work request so that our job can actually run. Notice that we're using a one-time work request here. Work Manager can also help us run tasks periodically. For example, we might want to backup data once a week or download new data every 24 hours. To do this, we can use a periodic work request instead. But since we just need to blur this image once, one-time work requests will get us the job done here. Okay, so far we've scheduled work to blur the image. But this isn't very useful yet because we haven't actually saved the new image. If we remember, Blur Worker is currently outputting the URI of the newly blurred image. So now we have to take that URI and save it to a file. Luckily for us, Work Manager has a pretty easy way to chain multiple work requests together. By chaining requests together, we can first execute the work to blur the image. And then once that work is done, we can execute a second worker to save the blurred image to the file. Since we need some new work to be done, Let's create a second worker that handles saving the file of the newly blurred image here in save image to file worker. We didn't specifically need to create the second worker class, 
but it's good practice to keep separate workers for specific tasks to keep things clean. You can see here in do work is where we implement saving the file. Our input data here will come from the output data of blur worker. And that's how we'll get the URI of the blurred image so that we can save it to a file. Now, navigating back to blur view model, we need to create a chain of work requests. Now that we have more than one worker, we can use the then method to queue up the second work request after the first one has completed. Calling then allows us to run tasks sequentially. So first we blur the image and then we save the image. This also means that the output data of the first work request will automatically be the input data of the second work request. If instead we want to run tasks in parallel instead of sequentially, we could use the list of method instead. Okay, great. Now that we've implemented the two work requests and chained them together, we'll actually be able to save the image we blurred. Our app can now blur and save an image, but we do have one small problem. If the user continuously taps on the go button, they'll end up triggering a chain of work events multiple times, causing a lot of redundant work we don't want. To ensure that the work we schedule is unique, we can use the begin unique work API instead of begin with. You'll notice that begin unique work asks us for a couple of extra arguments. First, we need to give a name to our unique work so that work manager knows how to detect duplicates. Then we need to tell work manager what to do when duplicate work is detected. Here we have a few options. The first one is to replace the existing work in progress. This means that if work manager detects duplicate work being done, it will stop the work that was in progress and start a new one that was requested instead. Our second option is to keep the existing work. This means that our new work request will be ignored since there is already the same work being done currently. There's also the append and append or replace strategy, which will append the new work after the current work is done. Since we only need to blur the image once, we're going to use the keep strategy here. That way, our app will not start blurring another image until its current work is done. For our last step, it would also be nice to know when all this work we scheduled has finished running. We could do that by getting a live data that holds a list of work infos. Work info lets us know the status of a work request, whether it's blocked, canceled, enqueued, failed, running, or succeeded. These different states can be helpful in letting us know if our work was completed successfully or if we need to retry it. And we can get these work infos in three different ways. Using the unique ID of a work request, using the work request's unique chain name, or using the tag of a name of a work request that we add. For our app, we're going to add a tag to our work request so that we can query for the work info. Now, output work info items is getting live updates about the status of our work requests with the tag output tag. Our next goal is to show a loading indicator when work is currently running. So in our Briller activity, we should observe a list of work infos. Since we only need to know if the work is in progress, we can use the isFinish method. isFinish returns true when the work has either succeeded, failed, or been canceled. So it's not a guarantee that the work was successfully done, but it's good enough to let us know whether the work is still in progress or not. And with that final touch, our image blurring app is in pretty good shape. Now that we've learned how to schedule work, let's take a quick look to understand how Work Manager schedules these tasks. Since Work Manager can schedule deferrable tasks that don't need to run immediately, if your app is not currently active, it's not a guarantee that your schedule work will be executed immediately. Based on which app standby bucket your app has been placed in by the system, your scheduled work may be deferred. Since our image blurring app requires the user to click a button in the app to start blurring the image, the work will not be deferred since the app is active when the requested work is scheduled. However, if our image blurring work was scheduled to run periodically without a user prompt, the work could be deferred based on how often our app is used. After a bit of work, we were able to create our first work request to blur and save the new image. Along the way, we learned how to chain requests, define unique work, and resolve potential conflicts. Now that we've explored the basics of the Work Manager API, it's time for you to give it a try in your own app. We've added some links down in the video description for more resources to help you get started. And that concludes our work for now. Be sure to tune in to the next episode, where we'll be looking at some more advanced usages of Work Manager.